galvanic corrosion galvanic corrosion is the first damage mechanism under the heading uniform or localized loss of thickness there are seven damage mechanisms to study under this heading for api 570 exam galvanic corrosion occurs when a corrosion cell is formed by the joining of dissimilar metals the pictorial representation of corrosion cell is taken from NAS study material. This is the base diagram for galvanic corrosion. What are all can be seen here? There is anode, there is cathode, electrolyte, and a metallic return path. You can see that the anode is corroded and the cathode is protected. This is actually the principle of cathodic protection and this is the principle of galvanic corrosion. Description of damage. The most important point related to galvanic corrosion is that it occurs at the junction of dissimilar metals. A suitable electrolyte is needed for galvanic corrosion to occur. Electrolyte means a moist environment, an aqueous environment or soils containing moisture. So, two conditions when match will cause galvanic corrosion. One, the junction of dissimilar metals and two, a suitable electrolyte. The electrolyte may be the fluid which is flowing inside or a suitable outside environment. Affected materials. All metals with the exemption of most noble metals are affected by galvanic corrosion. Critical factors. Actually, four conditions must meet for the occurrence of galvanic corrosion. Anode, cathode, electrolyte and metallic pathway or an external conductor. In the context of API 571, the presence of anode and cathode is considered as a single condition. So, we can say that three conditions are needed for the galvanic corrosion to occur. One, anode and cathode. Two different materials or alloys act as anode and cathode. Electrolyte A fluid that can conduct a current. Moisture or a separate water phase is usually required for the solution to have enough conductivity. 3. Metallic pathway or external conductor The conduct can be through welding, bolting, revecting or any other similar means. Active material becomes anode and noble material becomes cathode when the suitable conditions as discussed earlier are met. The noble material is protected by sacrificial corrosion of the more active material. That means the anode is disappeared after a period of time and the cathode is protected. Please note that the anode is disappeared after a period of time and the cathode is protected. The anode corrodes at a higher rate than it would be if it were not connected to the cathode. That means if anode is not connected to the cathode, it may not have been corroded that much in that environment. When connected to a cathode, it corrodes more. Please see the table. The bottom is cathodic and the top is anodic. Suppose you have connected two materials in the table. The farther the alloys are apart in the table, higher will be corrosion. Example, there are two connections. One is between type 304SS with steel and the other type 304SS with lead. The corrosion of steel is more when compared to lead as steel is farther than lead in this table. The exposed surface of anode and cathode has a significant effect on galvanic corrosion. If the anode to cathode ratio is small, the corrosion of anode will be high when compared to when the cathode ratio is large. The noble material may need to be coated as it will reduce or nullify the cathode area so that the anode to cathode ratio will be larger and thereby corrosion of anode will be very less. Two points here are 1. The anode to cathode ratio effects and coating on noble material or cathode. An interesting point is that the same alloy can act as both cathode and anode. This can be clearly understood from the figure. Two locations of same material 
and if there is a potential difference between these two locations and if they are connected by a suitable arc light the same material can act as both anode and cathode affected units of equipment heat exchangers were the tube material tube sheet baffle or dissimilar material are affected by galvanic corrosion buried pipelines electrical transmission support towers and ship hulls are other examples that are affected by galvanic corrosion the pictorial representation of corrosion cell is taken from nest study material this is the base diagram for galvanic here also a instrument connection is welded with the cs pipe fitting this is to make you aware that the intentional or procedure violation also causes galvanic corrosion here the cs nut and bolt will corrode at a faster rate and will fail appearance or morphology of damage galvanic corrosion happens in welded and bolted connections the more active material can suffer generalized loss in thickness crevice groove or pitting corrosion is the appearance of galvanic corrosion corrosion of the anode may be significantly higher immediately adjacent to the connection to the cathode prevention mitigation the best method is through good design the more noble material should be coated specially designed electric insulating bolt sleeves and gaskets can eliminate the electrical connection you may have heard of gi pipe and fittings and many have used also what is the principle of protection of galvanized steel galvanic protection principle is used in galvanized steel in galvanized steel zinc corrodes preferentially to protect the underlying carbon steel the cathode to anode relationship reverses at water temperatures over about 600 degrees celsius inspection and monitoring visual inspection and ultrasonic thickness gauging are very effective methods for detecting galvanic corrosion the damage may sometimes be hidden underneath a bolt or rivet head related mechanisms soil corrosion is a related mechanism of galvanic corrosion this is the end of this video thank you